Welcome to the Fast LED podcast number three. Today I'm going to show you how I developed the animation you see right now from scratch. Before we get started, big shout out to all of you who followed my invitation the last time and clicked the PayPal link and donated money to this project. It means really a lot to me and enables me to spend even more time on that in the future. So the link is still active in case you feel tempted to contribute yourself as well. You can do so and it would be amazing. Thank you very much. Usually I start with an empty sketch, as you see right now, and develop everything starting from there. So basically I just predefine here a master speed, some ratios for the oscillators, get the distance and the, and the polar angles, set some basic scaling factors for the, for the 3D dimensions for the noise, and then with an unchanged angle and unchanged distance, I render a value and map this to one color channel, in this case to green, uh, to, to red. Let's change this a bit by adding some movement to this layer. And I'm going to do this by manipulating the offset of the third dimension. So now I added the linear offset and as you can see, you see not much and this is because it's way too slow at the moment. So let's travel through the space 10 times faster. You start to see a little movement, but that's still far from the desired intensity. So let's again speed it up by an order of magnitude. There we go. Now the only thing that has changed is basically the depth of the projection screen we are looking at. Let's just take the square root of that. general remark, if you use any mathematical functions, make sure to always use the float version of it, because then it gets executed on the FPU, which makes it way faster. So we take the alt distance and take the square root of it and get by that a weird magnifying or distortion effect. Let's see. Now here you can already see that the behavior of the pixels is different when they are further away from the center. Let's change that a little by multiplying the values just by 5. So by that we basically zoom a bit further out and get a bit more feel of what's really going on in the picture until now. Let's add a little bit rotation or forth and back wiggle to the, to the picture. And I'm doing that by just adding a noise angle from the, from the oscillators to the original angle. So this is called noise angle C. Speed defined up here. So let's increase the effect of this angle manipulation a bit further to make it more visible. Let's double it for the beginning. Let's 
let me just exaggerate it shortly. This you have a clear picture of what I'm talking about here. So there you clearly see the intensity of the rotation. And it's basically all the time going forth and back based on pure random or at least pseudo random values provided from the noise function. Yeah, but 10 is a bit much. Let's say we go with 3, that it gets not too chaotic in the end. Based on what we just see, based on that single first layer, let's bring in a second layer. And we can do that in a very elegant way, namely by simply changing only the parameter we want to change. So let's say take here the, the offset. And now I want to have the offset moved by a different speed. So I change the oscillator here. That's all. Based on that new value, while all the untouched values remain as they were, simply calculate a new variable which then here gets automatically mapped to green. And let's see how that looks so far. So there you see, you have an entirely different layer now, which basically is subject to the same angle manipulation as the previous one but is at a different point on the z-axis and by that shows something different to the, to the first layer. In the next step, I would like to have the rotation of the second layer independent from the rotation of the first layer. And I simply do that by taking that equation here, copy it, before rendering of the new layer and this time instead of adding three times the noise angle C, I will add the noise angle D, which happens to have a different frequency than the other one. Again, the ratios are all defined here. And now it should be visible already that the rotation from both is independent from each other, which makes it already a bit more interesting to look at. All right, so let's apply the same transformation with different speed to a third layer. I'm going to copy the whole block here, insert it, replace the angle here by E, here the scrolling speed by E as well, and render that result into variable show 3, which here gets mapped to blue. All right, let's do a different thing here, which brings us closer to the animation I showed at the very beginning. Let's say we don't touch the distance here, we leave the distance exactly as it was. And in order to come to the circular look, we use the distance information as the input for the third dimension of the Cartesian, meaning the, the depth back and forth. So the, technically or geometrically speaking, that means we stick a cone into the cube and look inside the cone, which then defines our projection area. So by setting this formula here for Z, there we should transform that into the circular look for all three layers at once. Yeah, there we go. 
And at the moment, all the movements are towards the center, but we want it the other direction, meaning we simply multiply it by a negative number instead. Then we get exactly the movement we need. All right. So three independent layers which have their own angle offsets. And on top of that, I would like to add a bit more movement. And I do that by adding here an additional noise angle. And I do that to all layers in the same way, meaning that the whole animation now gently rocks forth and back. Maybe let's exaggerate it shortly to see what I'm talking about by putting an unreasonable high factor in front of it. This is a bit less visible than I expected, so let's push it to the extreme. Now it should be really wild. Okay, there is not much happening because here the time is so out of proportion compared to the other ones. Let's say we have it there instead. It should speed it up. There we go. We apparently happened to spend some time in an area where the noise value was zero and by that no angle change happened. So, yeah. See, now the whole thing rotates just way too wild and I want to keep it as subtle as the other one. So let's put it back to reasonable factors. And that should be enough for the movement at this point. Yeah. So at the moment, we basically render three layers and we assign them to the three color channels, red, green, and blue. We can do better than that. First of all, let's make sure that the colors bleed not so much into each other. And one possible way to do this is to take the third layer, blue at the moment. And subtract the other two layers from it. And mm, yeah, let's see what let's see what happens there. Okay, this up uh, the this operation functions, but later the values get mirrored, so. Let's get rid of this by just making sure that all the negative values, all the negative values just get sorted out. So there is the separation a bit better, maybe. Let's look at that. Just a 
was at a one layer. So there you basically can see, in case you remember the original shape, that there are now parts cut out of it. Yeah. So, just for comparison, before it looked like this. This is the pure result, show three. You see basically big blobs with little nuances and by this subtracting the other layers now we cut pieces out of that shape and by that create a bit more detail rich forms. So you get the idea, yeah. All right, now let's rework the color mapping here. Let's say red is show one. And from there, we also cut something off. And let's say we cut off half of show two, right? And again, that could become negative. So we don't want it. We really want to cut it out. So this is now pure red based on two layers. All right. Now in order to get a bit this yellow overall feeling, I would say for green, we take the, again, the difference of layer one and two. and take the half from it to push a bit more in the orange range. That works, but we should prevent the overshooting so that we only have mixed colors and not green, green alone. So in case it gets negative, we don't want it. Very nice. So now we have basically kind of a clean interference effect between layer one and two which creates these kind of color fades within the blobs itself, yeah. Yeah, then we are close to the end. Just find a nice mapping for blue again. So let's say blue is layer three. And from that, we subtract half of layer one again in order to produce these, these color shifts in the blob. One half. And in case it gets negative, just drop it. So, there you have it. That's basically the animation I showed you at the very beginning. And now, can take this thing 
as it is and slow it down or speed it up, let's say want it with three times the speed overall. Then you have it like this, which totally doesn't fit the character of this animation. So that's all. That's the animation I showed you at the very beginning. And this is how we come to it from scratch. I put you the link to the code down in the description as well as the PayPal link and you're welcome to play with the code and develop similar animation yourself. In case you have any questions, ask. If you have comments, I would like to hear them. Like I'm really depend on your participation and your feedback. Like are these short videos better? Are long videos better? Just let me know if this is if this makes sense for you and to you as I presented here. Or if there are things that need to be explained a bit more in depth. If so, I'm happy to do so. So please just comment, ask and let me know how it's going. Like, subscribe, share, let the algorithm know that you appreciate and support this channel to grow. Thanks for your attention and effort. Hope you found it interesting and maybe learned something new. I'm looking forward to see your creations and what you come up with and that's it for today. Let me know if you prefer the long or the short videos and see you next time. Bye.